innate skills. For instance, if a particular sorry, Senator, if you put the question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. The, the last question I have is Houston. Houston is developed by the chevrons of this world, the mobiles of this world. It would be good to leave such a legacy. Are you thinking in that line that we can have a Houston in Nigeria, somewhere in Niger Delta? I think it would be lovely. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for the opportunity. Senator Rose Oku. This is a gender sensitive Senate. Order. Order. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President, for finally giving me the opportunity. Let me join several other Nigerians to comment and appreciate the GMD and MPC for the initiatives and what he has done so far. Let me also ask very quickly and write very quickly on what you have said about private participation in the downstream sector, especially in refining products, as a long-term solution. Please order, please order. As a long -term Let the male solution. senators please listen to the female senators. Order. Thank you. As a long-term solution to the perennial problem of availability of refined products. Indeed, government had recognized this fact when in 20, uh, 2002 it licensed 18 private refineries. None of them took off except one, the Niger Delta uh, resource, uh, Petroleum Resources, which today refines only 1,000 barrels of, of, of crude for diesel. Now, government has again licensed 65 modular refineries. We want to know what guarantee do we have that this time around, that these 65, some of these 65 or all of them would work. Initially, what they said about the 18 was that the enabling environment was not there, including the regulated downstream sector, as well as feedstock at competitive prices and some other things. Now, as Minister of Petroleum that oversees the, the NMPC, what will you do differently this time around to ensure that these refineries work uh, so as to stop us from uh, further engaging in the uh, subsidy regime that continues to drain away millions of dollars from this country? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Oka. You will take those questions. Uh, um, this English senator asked about staff salaries that are being owed for about uh, uh, five, six months. That is news to me. Um, my salaries in NMPC are current. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody being owed salaries. Uh, on the contrary, <laughs> you could accuse us of utilizing money meant for federation accounts sometimes to pay salaries. That, that I can understand, but that salaries are being owed, uh, it's, it's not, not to my knowledge. Um, uh, um, Senator, distinguished Senator Stella Odo, um, you asked, well, you, you affirmed uh, certain policies which I totally agree with. One is the petroleum um, uh, policy inconsistency in the country, and I, I do agree with you. People get out and they make investments, run into billions uh, of Naira, uh, and if you can't keep policies consistent, then they, at the end of the day, they, they, they become companies that go bankrupt. We, we will intend to have a roadmap which is approved by... Um, uh, the Federal Executive Council and His Excellency the President. And once we do that, we're going to be consistent. Um, uh, this President, I don't think, has a history of not being consistent. So hopefully, I'm sure we will, we will keep to that. Uh, now, in terms of the borrowing costs uh, for local versus foreign companies, I think we need to have a clear demarcation of areas of operation, at least in an interim period. One of the things that you have is both local, like you rightly say, local and foreign companies competing for the same contracts in the different financial models completely. We will need to set parameters and say local companies need to be given a lot more access to, especially on, on onshore type contracts. You know, uh, while we begin to push the very experienced, uh, very, very hep um, heavily capitalized foreign uh, contracting companies more into the deep offshore type environment. That I think will, will help um, apply, uh, compare oranges or oranges and apples or apples. Um, Employment skill gap database, yes, I absolutely agree with you. We need to develop that because one of the problems you're having within an NPC are those sort of skill sets. 
uh, over a period of time, you find a lot of people being dumped on the corporation whose skill sets really do not fit what, what needs to be done by those positions. We're, we're reviewing those. We're going to create city gap analysis, not just for NMPC, but also for the entire oil industry. And that is certainly where uh, my skill set go, for example, right now, is on fabrication. And there are millions and millions of Nigerians uh, who have absolutely wonderful skills in simple fabrication. We need to grow those. So we're going to find those gap analysis and try and drive those. Now let me go to the, the, the refinery question. A refinery for me, uh, there, there, there are certain processes that must be followed. One, the, the, the existing ones uh, will have to be maintained. And if it means shutting them down to maintain them so I don't waste crude, we'll do that. Second, within the refinery environments, you have to commingle new investors who can have shared facilities, shared facilities in terms of pipeline, in terms of the excess power that they produce, and in terms of their tankage space. Three, you will need to look at modular refineries. At the end of the day, whether we accept it or not, um, um, destroying the local refineries that you see because of illegality may well be a first reaction to bring sanity, but ultimately you've got to create uh, and harness the technology that those people have developed over a period of time and be able to put modular refineries in areas where they can provide work for people, uh, get them out of the festiveness of attacking pipelines and stealing crude, and so we need to address that. Now, the difficulty has always been that most people who apply for licenses, they get the licenses, they have not looked at the financial modeling, they have not looked at the business modeling. It is simply uh, a thing of the current, you know, to have a license. They get it, and that's when they begin to do the analysis of whether the investment is worth it or not. Some do it because they want to get allocation of crude. And once they get allocation of crude, they stop there. Uh, we will have to review all requests for and all grants of refineries to ensure that anybody who is applying for that already has a business plan and can deliver on those business plan, and that's where business integrity comes. Ultimately, it's only that solution that will solve some of the uh, refining problems that we have today. I can take that quickly if you want. Yes, uh, uh, the, the reality is that that's been going on for a while. The new technologies uh, are helping. We're going to continue that process. As a matter of fact, two weeks ago, I got a, a reply from the team, which is beginning to show first indicative genealogical surveys that are showing that oil may well at last be found in charge. So we're getting some very useful information over the last uh, one year, and we're going to apply a lot of energy and resource using modern technology uh, that is available in this sector to try and harness on that. I, I do agree with you. If you could find a, a crude in, in Chad, why are we not finding one uh, right beside us there in Nigeria? But I, I think the, 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 uh, it's not from want of trying from every historical record that I've seen, but I think technology makes things possible that were not possible before. Shale, for example, is a given example of that. Illegal refineries. The Niger Delta. There's a great deal of pollution taking place in Niger Delta. Environmental degradation. Because the young kids are busting your pipelines, they are getting your crude oil, they are bunkering, they are producing uh, refined products from your crude. Now, the reaction of government is to blow up these pipelines, I mean, to, to, to blow up these illegal refineries put them out of work so we have sometimes in bias a 90 percent unemployment environmental degradation would you be willing the government nmpc to provide crude oil at a subsidized rate to these kids so they can refine these products using the modular refinery product uh, process put them together as communities like what awolo did in the west and make it possible for them to refine products so one they have employment they have a job they can pay their fees, look after their families, but more important, they protect the environment. One, it is cheaper to protect the environment than to blow up these refineries. Okay? Second issue.
the federal government is subsidizing consumption. 